Welcome, greetings from the Madhouse again. Um, as you can see outside, it's winter. And I am going to honor my Japanese heritage by taking advantage of one of the things that I learned when I was a small child and going to happily make over and over again. It's called gyoza, uh, or jadzu, if you're Chinese, and my apologies for the bad pronunciation, or pot stickers if you're from North America. Um, dead easy. Meat and vegetable dumplings. I really like them. So does my family. So I'm making them tonight. You start off with um, some meat. I've got about two pounds here. This will make enough for tonight, plus leftovers, which is good. I like making it with a mix of different meats. So I've got some ground beef and some ground pork. Uh, I've done this with ground beef, ground pork, ground chicken, ground turkey. I haven't done it with lamb, but I'm thinking the lamb would be too gamey, but it's up to you. Um, generally, I work on the whatever's on sale. This is one bunch of green onions that I have cut and washed and split. I'm going to chop them up now. So, the basic idea, just as a hint, when you're, when you're cutting, curl your knuckles so that you're not, you know, in danger of cutting off the important bits. Um, and use it as a guide for when you are chopping. And everybody say hi to my husband. He is being my extra set of hands while I sit here and ch chop things. I meant to show you this before I poured some of it into the meat, but yeah, that's about what you're looking at. Um, so, you know, sliced reasonably fine. So, here we have the next step. Um, you need some kind of green. Again, I tend to go for what's the cheapest thing in the grocery store that day. This is Shanghai bok choy. Slightly bigger than, basically, than baby bok choy. I've used Napa cabbage, I've used Chinese cabbage, I've used bok choy, I've used regular leaf lettuce. It's pretty much whatever's available and cheap. You, basically, you're looking for a little bit of green vegetable. So, this is it in its unchopped form. I've washed and uh, stemmed, the, or washed and cut off the end, and this is about the size you're looking for in the uh, chopped piece. Okay, so this is after chopping. Um, I've got, you remember that larger piece of uh, the Shanghai bok choy? I've got about four of those in here. Cup and a half to two cups-ish of not packed, chopped, Green. Okay, here's where I admit that I cheat. Um, this, as you can tell, is a box, is a thing of minced garlic, and that is a thing of minced ginger. Because we need both of those, and I hate chopping both of those. And since they're available easily in chopped form, I'm going to use those. So that's about five tablespoons of garlic. I realize that sounds like a lot, but there's also a lot of stuff now here. Now I have the ginger. This is a 120 gram jar of, gin of minced ginger. I used a little over half of it. I know that sounds like a lot, but honestly, <sighs> it's really hard to go too heavy on the ginger in this. And if you don't have enough, they really don't taste right. So, sesame oil, not a huge amount because it's very, very strong. Soy sauce. I like kikkaman. I know it. different people like different things. I grew up with kikkaman. Ugh. You know what? Holding a camera and doing this at the same time? Difficult. Okay, so as you can see, I'm terrible with measurements. So the measurements that are in the recipe that I've linked to is my best guesses over teaching people who need exact measurements. Um, they're reasonably okay. For those of you who don't use measurements, a good gl a good swish around with the sesame oil is good, and then a good glug of the. What we're going to do is mixing. I use my hands. I find that's the easiest way to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. For those of you who don't feel comfortable doing that or want to use a spoon or what have you, may God go with you. I don't know how you people do it. <laughs> okay. 
So here's your mixed um, stuff. Now this is when I wish to God that I had the ability to do smell o vision Because it's aromatic, but clean. You can smell the ginger, you can smell the garlic, you can smell the soy and the, and the sesame. We are now all set up. Um, I am a firm believer that the assembly line was invented for a reason. It might not have been invented for the reason that I use it for, but the principles still sound. Okay, so you take one of your discs with its little bit of meat. Get your finger wet. Again, if you want to use a pastry brush or something like that, go for it. I'm lazy and I know all the people who are going to eat this. <laughs> and I kiss them on a regular basis. So, you know, really, not a problem. Anyways, get the outer edge damp. And you're going to fold it over. And boy, this would be easier if I wasn't holding onto a camera. But you take the fact that there's a little bit of flour on the outside of the, on, on the surface of the wrapper. And, you're, and the nature of flour and water is to make glue. And you give it a little pinch as you fold it in half. And there is your... We have a bunch of cooked. the gyoza ready. I'm, I'm still working on it. Um, there's lots more meat to go. This is a somewhat time-intensive thing, so as you can see, I've pulled up Netflix to keep myself entertained. All right. I have... My trusty cast iron frying pan with a little bit of oil in it. It's just starting to heat up. And what I have here is a pasta pot. If you have a bamboo steamer, great. If not, um, this will work as a jerry rig. There is, let's see if you can see in there. You can't see any water in the part that you would normally see the water in if you were making pasta because what I want is for so this to be started. a steamer. And I'm putting the gyoza in the frying pan. You want enough oil to be able to get a decent thing without having them stick. Because trust me, getting these suckers off when they get really stuck is a giant pain. So as you go along, you'll have to put a little bit of extra oil in. The nice part is when you move it to the steamer, a lot of that extra fat and oil and stuff just drains away into your water and ta-da! There's not quite as, as much. As you can tell, it's kind of loud, but you should be able to see how they're, you know, a little bit around the edges. So we start getting a little bit translucent. And then we flip them over by that beautiful golden brown. So, this is hard to do with a camera in my hand. I'm going to turn this off. So. There we go. I have finished flipping them. Now, uh, if you don't like having grease everywhere, and if you have one, this is a splatter screen. It's pretty much sole purpose in life is to prevent your kitchen from being sprayed in oil. I don't always remember to grab it in time. It is now time to put them from here. As you can see, they're just sort of browned on both sides. And we're putting them just took into the steamer. If you have, again, if you have a steamer, by all means, use that. This is me not having multiple things for something that I can do with the thing I've got. And these are going to stay in here for about three to five minutes. Um, as you can see, I've got it on sort of medium, medium, low. Um, and now we're into the lather, rinse, repeat section. Last trick before I uh, continue, and mostly not film it because it'll be the same thing over and over. When these are just about ready to go for the next batch, is about when these are ready to come out and go into this is what we're looking the oven. We're finished. And I'm partway through getting my supper together. So, thank you, and we're done.